This is the GIS News Hour for Friday, April 26, 2013. I am Abigail McIntyre. In the headlines, World Bank praises Grenada dancing towards fiscal governance and investment promotion. Major youth initiatives to be launched on Saturday and May Day celebrations to focus on creating a new environment for workers. Details are next. Gospel Expressions is here Saturday, May 11th at Tanti Netball Court, 2 p.m. Pre Health Checks, Family Fun and Games, 5 p.m. The Expressions Songwriting Finals, 6 p.m. Concert featuring Tropical Breeze, Innovation, All Anointed and Jade. Special guests Lester Lewis from Jamaica and Emron Henry from St. Lucia. Tickets $25 on sale at Nikki's and Bookstore, The Box Shop in Grenville, Guav Open Bible and Lady Cinti in Soteres. 12 and under free before 4 p.m. After 4, they pay $10 at the door. Gospel Expressions, Saturday, May 11th at Tanti Network Courts. Sponsors, Grenlec, Coop Bank, HM Water, Gems Beach Resort, Gabriel's Rentals, Flow, GIS and WFM Radio. She's just a girl and she's on fire. Hotter than a fantasy, lonely like a highway. Oh, she got four feet on the ground, and she's burning it down. This girl is on fire. This girl is on fire. Entertaining, informative, interactive, fun. The new Spice Mornings with Janice. Tell everyone, tune in. The World Bank says Grenada has advanced towards fiscal governance and investment promotion and that it is also seeking to modernize several areas of its operations as part of a project to enhance fiscal and promote investment. The Washington-based financial institution said the new Keith Mitchell administration has developed capacity in the, in the conformity assessment for exported goods, noting that customs procedures have become automated and cargo clearance time has significantly reduced from the to hours. The bank said conformity certificates are now being issued for Grenadian export goods. It noted that by 2008, Grenada's growth was being challenged by the disastrous impact of two hurricanes, 2004 and 2005, which destroyed much infrastructure and devastated agricultural exporters and the reduced flow of international credits under the onslaught of the global financial crisis. According to the World Bank, Grenada urgently needed to create the conditions to ensure the recovery of the domestic private sector, sustain economic growth and support the generation of fiscal revenues to finance government programs and control the level of debt. To that end, it added that Grenada needed a strategy to promote investments, develop effective systems, and speed up the processing of investment proposals. It said Grenada also needed the equipment and skills to conduct product conformity assessments for exports. The World Bank report stated that the project supported development along two distinct avenues, strengthening the revenue capacity of government institutions and improving the environment for private sector investments and trade. Key recipients of support were the Customs Department, the Inland Revenue Department, the Grenada Investment Development Corporation, and the Bureau of Standards. The bank said the project focused on building strong institutions with forward looking management, strong information systems, transparency and broad access to information, and effective procedures within the government that would reduce the administrative burden on the private sector actors. The project aimed at creating an effective interface between the business community in Grenada, represented by the Chamber of Commerce and government institutions, and led by the Ministry of Finance, so as to help minimize administrative barriers to entrepreneurship and support economic 
connectivity in Grenada and international trade with the goal of generating much needed revenues. After the implementation of the automated system for Customs Data World, Asakuda World, the World Bank said the online of customs procedures significantly improved conditions for cross-border trade. It said that within weeks after it became operational, the system helped to reduce the rate of physical inspections of commercial cargo from 60% to 18%, adding that cargo clearance times declined from four days in early 2011 to less than a day and a half in June 2012. The World Bank said the new information system improved client satisfaction with the service. Since June 2012, clients have been able to submit their manifests electronically and follow the customs procedures online. Also to be noted is that the Inland Revenue Department has introduced an automated audit module in their information system that following the data cleanup helps target non-payers of taxes more efficiently. In addition, the World Bank said the Grenada Industrial Development Corporation approved its investment promotion strategy, initiated baseline study priority development sectors and developed improved access to information and better, faster services to investors. The Bureau of Standards also created capacity for conformity assessment with plans to expand its services to domestic traders. Newly acquired measurement equipment and technical skills developed through training enabled Grenada to issue quality conformity certificates to both exported produce and internally traded local produce and goods. It said that it provided credit to the tune of 1. million US dollars to the project, with the European Union strongly supporting it with 0.5 million grant-based co-financing and ongoing support of developments in the information management area after the project's closure. The World Bank said the project created demand for continued reforms, adding that further support of strategic governance and the information systems in tax administration will be provided by its strengthening economic management in the Caribbean Regional Program. Transferring the positives from the Grenada Youth Upliftment Program and the old Imani into the new Imani program that will be launched on Saturday. That is the promise of Senator Sheldon Scott, the Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Youth. Focus will be placed on training and certification. Level 1 will focus on personal development. Level 2 will feature on-the-job training. And Level 3, participants will either be given permanent placements or be encouraged to open their own businesses. One of the problems that you would have had with the GIA program, and we've been hearing that constantly, it wasn't much of a problem under the last program. There were issues here and there, but generally, trainees could have told you who was their, their supervisor, who was the person that was in charge of them, and you could have heard coming back the various issues. But under the GIA program, the issue of supervision and monitoring of the trainees, mm -hmm. that fell way short, way, way short. And as I said, the positives, we're going to expand on them, but the negatives, we're going to attempt to make them into positive. We're going to address them and try to make them into positives. So we, there's a serious focus on monitoring, ensuring that you know that you don't place a person in an institution for two years, and at the end of the two years, and you find out that that person had various issues, so the institution is not interested yeah. in keeping them, yeah. or that they've left there without learning anything major, that they went in, and they would have left at the end of that two years, basically at the same level that they went in there. there we good cannot, of course, that very early. of course, yeah. you know that within three months, this is where you're supposed to be because, of course, certification. That's where certification comes in at well. At the end of three months, you have suppo you're supposed to have completed this module. You're supposed to know this. At the end of six months, you're supposed to know this. At the end of one year, yeah. this is where you're supposed to be. So constant supervision towards certification. Senators, under the Grenada Youth Enterprise Initiative, the second of the two major projects to be launched on Saturday, young people will have the opportunity to access funding from a budgeted $2 million for the program. The allocated sum has been increased from $500,000. The youth of Grenada can access those funds and they'll be able to start their own small businesses. But it's not just a, a process where they just come in and they get the money. Of course, they have to ensure that they go through the program properly. We're going to train them how to manage, how to do a business plan. Very important because um, you may have a young lady that could do hair very well. She could do um, hairdressing very, very well. And she wants to open a hairdressing place. But the location that she wants to open it, yeah. there may be three or four there. 
So you find that she opens and then she's not making money and she's wondering why. But if you open a hairdressing place in an area where there are only about five or six households, and at the end of the day, there are two other hairdressing places, it's quite obvious. You may get people who know you very well, but you won't be able to do much business. So did they, how do you plan what you're doing and so on? How do you market yourself and how do you control the funds? Another very important aspect of operating a small business. How do you control and manage your funds? And of course, we have an officer who is going to be working in the GDB along with that program. Plus, we're going to have the person within the ministry who's going to be in charge of that program. So the various aspects that we will be looking at to ensure that our young people not only have hope, but have opportunity. Because we, we, we're prepared, we're giving them the hope out there. So there's hope. But at the end of the day, hope is nothing without action. Mm -hmm. And we intend to implement each and every one of these programs in a serious manner. The activity at the new Grenville Buds Terminus begins at 1 p.m. and will include a career fair and a gospel concert. There will also be addresses by Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell and Minister for Youth, the Honorable Emmeline Pei. It's not going to be business as usual. This is nation's future that we're dealing with. So we're going to be explaining to them what they're going to be coming involved in. Of course, the forms will be available tomorrow at that um, at that program so they'll be able to get it but of course we'll start to give out the forms after we've explained because it's not a simple matter we just come and sign up but some thought needs to go into it yeah. but they need to work with a passport photo a reference letter of course if we're going to send you into somebody's business place to work a reference letter from someone that knows you that says well this is a good person to do that with so a reference letter Certificates, if they have certificates, CXC, etc., they could provide those certificates and we'll be able to use that. If they do not have certificates, if they have not completed secondary school, that does not bar you. You can still come, bring the passport photo, bring the reference letter, and of course, bring some for form of identification, NIS card, passport, um, ID card, whatever, and of course, you could sign up for So some people have been thinking, well, okay, I have no certificates, I can't come. No, you can come still. Bring your, your passport photo, bring your information, your reference letter, etc., and you can still sign up for the program. Creating a new environment for workers to advance socially and economically. This will be foremost in the minds of members of the seven unions affiliated with the Umbrella Trades Union Council when they meet in St. David's for May Day celebrations on Wednesday, May 1st. The unions will assemble the playing field and march to the Lassages playing field. Following the march, there will be solidarity messages from TUC affiliates and members of the Indian community. May 1st is also observed as Indian Arrival Day. TUC President Mrs. Madonna Hafford says the theme, creating a new environment for the social and economic advancement of workers, was chosen because of the continued effects of the world economic crisis on workers. She says they want to see people going back to work. And the only how you could get the economies moving if you put money in the hands of persons, money in the hands of people. People have to have spending power. The businesses will succeed when workers have money to spend. And this is what we have been preaching for the longest while now. And so it means to say that we have to create a new economy, a new environment for workers to really advance socially and economically. Um, so workers must get back to work. Those in work, you have to have new skills, etc. We want to see workers, especially the lower level workers, find yourselves into an, an area, a project, a program that would give you a different skill. Because with skills, you could really advance yourself. You could take yourself out of poverty. We want to see poverty in the world reduced. And the only how that could be done is when people are working to advance themselves and their families. Mrs. Harford says while there is focus on job protect, they also want workers to understand that demands cannot be unreasonable in this economic period. In the, in the entire world, a lot of maybe unions would have had to look at how do we accept salary increases, minimal salary increases. And that is what has been happening in our own country too. Um, you do not want to put the worker in such a position that the worker 